It is thinking about it. Bear with. Awesome. Can everybody see the screen and hear me? Thumbs up, Paul Belkett in the room. Awesome. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Cool. So, uh, kia ora, everybody. Uh, for those that don't know me, I'm, I'm Dan Sykes. I'm a, a part of the partner team here at Microsoft New Zealand uh, as, a, as a technology strategist. Um, I was keen to have a, a fairly open conversation with everybody about Partner Admin Link or PAL. Hopefully everybody on the call has heard of PAL. Uh, feel free to give it a, a thumbs up. We'll, we'll use all the features of Teams as we go through today. Um, as we go as well, if you've got questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try and monitor that too. Um, um, but it's a super important topic. So. Um, as I said, keen to talk to you guys about it for a number of reasons. PAL is um, one of the key measures that we use to track partner-influenced ACR. So if you don't know what ACR stands for, it's Azure Consumed Revenue. Um, partners play a huge role in driving outcomes for our customers. And in a traditional sense, um, we didn't have a complete view of who were those partners that were actually influencing the outcomes for our customers when it comes to Azure? Um, so we rolled out uh, this thing called PAL. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a whirlwind tour through all of this. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about where you can go get some documentation, and I'm going to show you how you actually go ahead and activate PAL. So let's start with what PAL is. So PAL is um, all about automated influence tracking via telemetry. Um, so it's all about precisely measuring partner activity in a customer's Azure environment. Um, so from the moment that you activate this admin link, which is effectively taking your MPN ID and attaching it to an account that you use to access a customer's um, Azure environment, you start accruing this partner-influenced ACR. Uh, there's also incentives tied to uh, the Azure consumption that's driven from this. Now, there's a few... Um, nuances around that um, around that partner influenced ACR uh, and and how you get paid incentives on it and we'll try to cover a few of those but again I'll point you to some documentation to go deep on that um, and the other thing is it supports multiple partners so this is not like the traditional digital partner of record where there was a mad scramble for who was going to have deep or who was having the most influence over a customer's environment it also breaks through the constraints that existed where you couldn't have Depot on a CSP subscription either. So one partner has the CSP subscription and another partner is coming in to do either some subcontracted work or they're driving a very specific niche um, workload within Azure. Um, they can now activate PAL and be recognized for that, um, for that work. Just page across. Cool. So PAL is not a uh, necessarily a perpet like the deep or was a perpetual set it forget it kind of a done in one situation pals opt as it says here is optimized to track managed services delivered by the partner what that means is that um, you only uh, have partner admin link for the time that you're actually doing work for the customer. So if you come in, do a one month piece of work, back out again, lose access to the customer's environment, you no longer have PAL. So this is, again, it's optimized for those that are running a managed service for that customer. Uh, it's all built into Azure, so it's attaching to effectively the same meters and machinery that we use to um, to drive billing for customers through this. And as we said before, it also supports multiple PALs. Um, so effectively, the way that it works is the partner gives you access. Now, through these slides, it talks a lot about admin access, but um, access can be driven in a number of ways. It could either be a directory account that you have or a guest account. It could be a service principal. It could be... Um, template attribution if you have something that's sitting in the marketplace that a customer is taking and deploying. Again, the documentation goes into a lot more detail around this, but the idea is that you're in there, you're influencing, you should always PAL. Um, so one of the things I talk a lot to my partners about is building a real muscle with their uh, with their team, their engineers, uh, of ensuring that they constantly um, ensure that every time they access a customer's environment that PAL is in place. Um, if you're leveraging tooling like Lighthouse, making sure that you have partner admin link on the service principle. If you have um, 
infrastructure pipelines to you, you're running um, infrastructure as code with DevOps pipelines that are deployed with a service principle, making sure that you have PAL on that service principle um, as well. Same goes for if you're using Nerdio or other tools for deployment around um, WVD, etc. cetera. Um, if we just page along here, so um, one thing to, um, to really point out here is this is a partner-driven motion but you should um, always ensure that you have uh, approval from your customer before you go ahead and uh, and have access to their environment. Now, that, that, that might sound like a weird thing, but you should always make sure that you the rights that you have in a customer's environment is the right rights for, for what you are attempting to do. Um, there's not necessarily a, a reason to be having a specifically a PAL conversation with your customers because this is all about, hey, they've given you access and you're just attaching your MPN ID to, to your account effectively. But it is worth knowing that, you know, it's using standard product telemetry. So as we said, it's the same mechanisms um, and, and machinery that are being used to drive billing. So the same meters. Um, uh, there's no new data collected and it adheres to all of Microsoft's privacy and security policies. So um, there's no additional data collected because of PAL. Um, if you just jump across. So the way that PAL activation works is that um, once you enter a service agreement with the, um, the with the customer, so you agree through statement of work or a master services agreement, whatever it is that you have in place contracted with them that you're going to do work on the Azure environment, um, you get access into that. Now, you should obviously have your own, um, be adhering to best practices around identity and access management. So thinking about pro privileged identity management and all those good things. But you, when you do have access to the environment, you should from day one ensure that you have partner admin link in place. Um, so as it says here, step two, customer gives you access. Um, and it mentions here, local domain account, guest user access and the service principle as we've already covered. You then go through some steps, which we'll cover here to put PAL in place, and then that starts to show up in the reporting. Now, there's a few nuances to this around in, in ensuring that you have the MCI agreed um, as a partner, which is the Microsoft, and Paul Balkett will probably know more about this, the Microsoft Commerce uh, Incentive Agreement all signed up. Um, there are tons of incentive guides uh, in the partner hub around what it means for for you from an incentive point of view, whether you're sole or multiple PALs or multiple partners playing with the same resources, et cetera, um, which we can't necessarily uh, fully get into today. Um, well, let's just skip through this because it's kind of a bit of a double up, but this is, the, this is the crux of it. If you think about it from a simplest, simplest terms, every human in your organization should know how to do this. They access the management portal for Azure. They click on the cog icon on the top right hand side. They drop in your MPN ID. So super, super critical that everybody in your business has the MPN ID um, to hand when they're doing this. And we can see that there's a, um, a video there around how you create that PAL link, um, which you'll be able to check out after, after this presentation, but you build that muscle. So the idea here is that um, you as a partner, um, that isn't the transacting CSP partner because that's handled in very different ways. You're not the transacting EA partner, but you're coming in to drive, influence, deliver amazing outcomes for, for your customers. You should be showing up in the reporting and getting the um, the incentives kind of due for that. Um, PAL is as scoped at different levels depending on the on the role based access to you have either to the at the subscription level, the resource group, or the individual resource level. Um, all of those levels are the levels at which you can either have that single PAL, so a single partner influencing, or multiple PALs. Um, if you've got multiple partners and they're influencing. And then the critical part for all of you is how do you actually see that you are making real genuine progress on this is through Partner Center, um, you can run through the analysis and what you'll see in the uh, partner association type is there is a partner admin link option. So you can drive in there and see that you are linked. So if we're going to step back from the mechanics of this and the very, very rushed kind of 10 minute overview, this is really, really important. This is not just um, important because you get some incentive from it. This is important because this is how you know you show up to your um, to your customer, to Microsoft, to the Microsoft sellers and account teams as actually being an influential partner in the customer base, driving amazing outcomes, um, 
driving success for the customer and influencing the consumption of Azure. And that's the PAL in a nutshell, a very, very high level and, and fast paced run through. Any questions, anybody not heard of PAL before or anybody um, unsure about whether or not they should be um, linking their MPN ID through the Azure portal? If not, I think, Isaac, I'm a little bit over my 10 minutes maybe, so I'll, I'll throw back to you guys. You did such a good job, Dan, and no one's got any questions. I'll stun them into silence, do you think? <laughs> um, Look, we're, here, we're here to help. We, we, we want you guys to be showing up for the work that you're doing, so make sure you fully understand PAL, and if you don't, you ask questions. We will help. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. No, thanks, Dan. I'll hand it over to um, Darren Oxley to go over his section. Thanks so much, Dan. Hey, team, good. Just checking, sound checking that you can see my slide. We can hear awesome. you. Awesome. Is there a slide on the screen? No. It says, oh, oh, there is now. There is now. Oh, fantastic. How's that? Um, yeah, so, <laughs> hey, kia ora, everybody. Uh, my name's Darren Oxley. I'm the customer program manager in our small and medium business segment. Just want to just touch very quickly on um, some in country, what we call Teddy resources that Microsoft um, has. Um, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of questions around this, but just want to run through very quickly what this what this program is. So they, we've got three gentlemen um, working on behalf of Microsoft that are doing outbound, basically, telesales. So we've got uh, Nick, Varun, and Gary. They are all based in Auckland, right? So they're all work, working quite closely with this team. Um, they are outsourced to a contract agency, but they they kind of working on our behalf. And they are um, engaged in targeting a set of customers that is based on Microsoft propensity data. Um, and it's propensity data really driving um, opportunities around specifically around modern workplace and focused on uh, the current sales place we've got. So security, um, remote work, et cetera. And from Azure, obviously driving ACR. Um, there are about 650 customer accounts, give or take a few. Um, within their target customer set. And I think the point I just want to emphasize with this is that the, um, let me just drop my video on quickly. Sorry, I thought I had, um, is, is that they are a very much, this is a complementary motion to partners. It's not a compete motion. Um, it is, they are driving CSP, so they're not driving any kind of direct or um, EA type sales engagements. And they really are there to support. So um, where they can, they will loop partners into the discussion. But the, the real the real opportunity here or the real um, engagement method here is to uncover opportunities within our existing customer set and uh, you know drive those to to CSP and kind of follow that through and and continue our cloud discussion that we're having with with customers. So if your customers do get calls from these guys, they're not based um, out of some call center in uh, some far off land. They are here. Uh, their names are on the screen, so and they are working. Any questions you've got, please please ping us and let us know. But uh, they're there to support and help drive uh, sales across our, our kind of our, our small and medium business segment. And that's it, short and sweet. Yeah, thanks, Darren. I just want to reiterate that, guys. Um, there's a there's a few of you on the call today, and for those that watch this afterwards, um, I have you know got from time to time queries from you guys about what the hell is Microsoft doing, calling our uh, our customers, your customers, whatever. Um, and and kind of you know um, you know questioning querying what we're doing and I, I genuinely want to reiterate what Darren's saying that, that, that what we're what our, what we're trying to do here is build our overall ecosystem and and sales leads and opportunities for all of us um, so so genuinely and there are some downsides to it because we're going to call some customers where you're already working with them and we might put a foot in, uh, you know, at a place or, or something might, you know, things like that. But we've weighed up the pros and cons and the opportunities we generate out of this activity um, far outweighs the kind of small couple of little negative things that we have to do with it. Um, so please, we'd love your support in, in doing that. And when the guys reach out and contact you, um, so if, if they ask a customer, who's their incumbent partner, and they say it's partner ABC, the guys are going to reach out to you as well. And please, can you work with um, them uh, to help out to, you know, and if you if we're if we're stepping on toes and we're not doing the right thing, let us know and we'll adjust course or whatever. Uh, but we generally want to help you to drive new motions into customers um, and particularly around our solution assessments. Um, which uh, I think our, was at our last call, we had um, 
Suzette and her team cover assessments again. So please make sure you're leveraging assessments, but that's one of the key motions that um, our telesales team will be positioning with customers. Um, and we are happy to do the assessment direct with the customer and then provide you the results so you can go and help close the deal and get the customer deployed. We did get a question from Kath saying, does, uh, does that come through as an RFA in the PC or do they call us? Yeah, hey, thanks so much, Kath, for that question. So the question, um, for everyone who hasn't seen it, is just how does the leads come through? And that is an awesome segue into uh, let me join this meeting and I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Sorry, I wasn't joined in before, so let me do that real quick. Um, so guys, leads that the guys work on will get sent from uh, part or through Partner Centre. Um, and so basically we will, you'll, you'll get a lead notification that comes through. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, screen here and uh, let's do this. So um, first up, what I want to show you quickly is uh, this is part of the scheduled um, program today as well. I'm not just showing this as a segue. Um, so this is the customer facing search site, right? Uh, it does have location based um, population here in this field if you have it turned on. But I'm just gonna say I'm in Auckland and I've got 10 to 50 staff and I'm looking for Microsoft 365. And you've got product skills and, and other areas which I'll talk about in a moment. And so I go ahead and search and the way that this search result is generated, guys, is super important, is based on the profile that you put in. I'm going to talk about how you do that shortly. Um, as well as your competencies and your responsiveness to leads. If we keep sending you leads and you decline them or ignore them, you will get dropped down this list. It's not us manually doing it. There's an algorithm that works in the background and basically you will drop off this list. So we, we would ask you that if you get sent leads, that you are actioning them immediately within 24 hours and you're updating the tool. I'll come to that just in a moment. Um, but the top match there are partners that have competencies uh, based on the profile that I search for. You can then go and filter down by other services, by solution areas, industry, and then you can actually filter and search by partner as well. So whenever we do uh, an outbound telesales thing, whenever we get an inbound query from um, a customer through our online chat service or inbound phone, contact us forms, um, our teams, wherever they are in the world, will go look this up basically and find a partner to refer the customer to if they don't have a partner or if they ask us for a new partner to speak to. So just be aware of that. So if we call a customer or we speak to a customer and we position uh, Windows Virtual Desktop with them and you as a partner don't offer that and the customer tells us that, then we're going to refer them to another partner as well. Um, so just be aware of that. We always want to refer them back to you as the incumbent partner of record, um, but that's why you need to be across our solution portfolio so you can have those discussions with the customer as well. And so that's the public facing search engine. Uh, this is built into our CRM tool, our dynamic CRM tool internally, which is used by anyone in our call centers, our chat service, our sellers anywhere in the world. Um, this is built in natively into our CRM tool to find and refer leads to you. And the way the leads get to you is basically through Partner Center. So in Partner Center on the left hand side, I won't show it right now, um, is a referrals area or grow your business, I think it is. And then under referrals, can't remember the menu order now, you should, we'll see referrals in there. To ensure that you are listed on the partner site that I just showed you, and to ensure that we can send the lead to you, you need to make sure you've built a business profile. And so this page here, I'll drop these in the chat as well. This page here, you can see here, partner center menu, select referrals, business profile. Uh, so sorry, I got it slightly around the wrong way. Um, choose New Zealand uh, and then fill in your business profile. Can I suggest that you do read what's on here? The summary of this is don't tick every single box. If you tick in every industry, every business size, every location in New Zealand, we won't send leads to you because that's just not realistic. So tell us genuinely where are you based, what industries you serve and what products and solutions you work with. There is no point us sending a customer to you that wants to deploy Azure Sentinel or 
um, AI if you don't do that at all. Um, and so um, make sure you complete your profile adequately as well. Um, and yeah, you can see in here, there's different tags for product service solutions and those kinds of things like that. Um, we also have a path where we can endorse um, uh, partners, um, although not something we're doing directly right now, but we'll probably introduce it next year, next calendar, next fiscal year, excuse me. So that's, um, that's that side of it. I will just quickly show you, um, this is the, I'm sorry I don't have a, 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 a PowerPoint of this. This is a PDF here. I'll drop this in the window as well. Um, but this is where you fill in your expertise, as you can see. And then um, I'll just go through and show you what the lead looks like. So this is what you get. Apologies, the image is a little bit grainy, um, but you've got an inbox there of referrals. Um, and when you click the accept button is when you get the full detail of the customer opportunity. Um, so it's most important guys, I'll read it again, is if we send you a lead, uh, you need to either accept or decline it. Please do that. If you just ignore them, you will get a lower ranking and we'll just stop sending you leads. So I, I can't, you know, kind of emphasize enough how important this is, as well as updating the lead. So if I go um, down here, scrolling around, sorry. So we need to know what's happening with the deal. Because if our sales guys and our call centers and whatever don't get the feedback that the deal has been won, closed, lost, um, stalled, whatever, um, then we can't then give them the feedback to help them grow, to help them generate more business and for us to track the success of them, right? So we need you to go and fill in um, what's happening with the deal. And you can see on the right-hand side what the feedback options are available um, there. Uh, another question here, Josh, uh, looking at our partner centre now, we have leads, but I've never received a notification of them. Yeah, so um, I think, Josh, uh, there is an option to get an email notification. Um, it's a probably a role, a user role in, um, or, a, or a tick box option somewhere in partner centre. I apologise, I've not gone into detail because I don't have a partner centre account that's live to actually do that in myself, but I will send you the guide. I'll pop this guide in. It's probably in here somewhere, um, but yes, uh, <laughs> please actually, given what Josh has just said, please can everyone on the call and anyone listening and what, that watches this, go check Partner Centre right now, because you might have a whole bunch of leads sitting there that are just sitting there dead now, uh, possibly stale. Anyway, so um, does that make sense? I'll just pause there for a moment. Feel free to come off mute. Any other questions um, on that? Oh, good. Cool bananas. All right. Since I've got the mic, guys, I just wanted to spend a couple more minutes talking about a couple of other important things um, that, that, are, that are new um, in uh, the Microsoft world. Uh, one thing is um, there is a group called the Microsoft 365 Partner Community. You might wonder how I keep across all of the uh, product news and partner channel announcements and things like that. It's primarily through announcements that happen on this Yammer group. Um, so if you're not joined up to it, I'll put the link in the chat. Um, and this is an example of a post that was made just a couple of days ago. Uh, so you can see here, this is uh, because it's got the microphone, uh, whatever thing next to it, um, it's an announcement. So it means it will get emailed to you. I'm not suggesting you go and spend time on the forums and chatting and all that sort of stuff. Uh, like we do on our New Zealand Yammer group, when we send an announcement, it does send an email notification to you. Uh, so that's all I look at. There's maybe one or two a week, um, and I just kind of follow them and then look at them. And so you can see here some really cool stuff. There's some new announcements in Business Premium, which I'll talk about in a moment. And you can see that what's the upcoming uh, webinars, uh, which I'll touch on coming up in April. Um, so there's those kind of things. And then you've got... Um, yeah, like uh, some forum stuff or some survey stuff, like what do you want to see in Inspire pre-day events for this year, those kinds of things. So anyway, um, keep an eye on that. That's a really good source of information. One of the webinars that's suggested in there is the last one of our M365 uh, webinar series. So I'll just scroll up the page here. You can kind of see this is the Accelerating Your Business Through Managed Services with M365 Business Premium. So again, uh, this has been running for a while now. 
Uh, you can go watch these on demand. The time zone is not very good for New Zealand, but you can register here or go back to this page anytime and then register and then watch them uh, again. I've already talked about this before in other sessions, so I won't, I won't uh, bang on about it. But guys, if you're interested in building a practice around Microsoft 365 Business Premium, which you all should be, uh, it's the biggest, one of the biggest market opportunities we have, then this is the really the core stuff to help you do it. Um, and just a couple of other things that post mentioned was what's new in Business Premium. So a couple of two big major things this month. As you can see, pretty much every month we're releasing new stuff into Business Premium. So we've now launched um, Universal Print. It's been in GA, uh, in, uh, excuse me, Pilot for a while. So we're now in GA for Universal Print, which is basically our cloud-based print service. If you own Microsoft 365 Business Premium, you are licensed for a number of prints per, per customer or per company. Um, and so uh, that is essentially the ability to do away with a local print server, get rid of the hardware on-premise, print to any printer device that's supported. And we've got lots of the major global uh, print guys, Rico and um, 3G Xerox and those kind of guys supporting this cloud-based print service. The other cool thing is summary analysis of um, threats and I'll just sort of zoom in on that screen there of threats and antiviruses across the, the devices, right? So this is as we build out the business premium sort of MSP management tooling and single pane of glass kind of views with Lighthouse. This is some of the work that's going into that to kind of give you that single view of what's happening in terms of your threat um, and security posture. So yeah, hopefully you guys are across that. Again, I won't spend too much time. There's a nice video you can go and watch. And of course, just a reminder again, um, I'll just go into the detail here just so you know there is a full detailed page that talks about everything that Defender will pick up and how it works and all that kind of stuff. Now, um, hopefully you are aware that as a Microsoft partner with an action pack or a competency, you can all get access to um, the business premium product now um, with the, the small mid-sized cloud um, competency. And that'll give you 10 licenses if you're a silver partner or 25 if you're a gold partner. Uh, so please make sure you go get your internal license keys and start using this internally um, as well. Uh, there's the universal print thing. I won't spend too much time on it, but here's the plans that are, are, it's included with. Um, so really, really good. Another little benefit of going to, to business premium. Okay, uh, just shifting gears quickly, just a couple more minutes, guys, um, and then I'll pass on. About a week ago, we launched, uh, we've been doing this kind of every quarter, mm -hmm. basically work um, trends um, and kind of the future of work studies that we do. Um, and we get this data essentially through um, all the signals that come through the Microsoft graph. So that's meetings that people have, teams, things, chats, calls, those kinds of things, video, voice, all that kind of stuff. Super, super interesting stuff here. Uh, I highly recommend using this in your marketing stuff. Even if you just want to send something to your customers, like as some insight for how they think about how they work and how their business is changing and how they should change their culture and how they should work differently with staff um, is a really useful thing. Even if it's not necessarily a sales pitch, it's just a interesting insights and learnings. Um, and, and from this site here, um, there's some super interesting stats, but they're also in a presentation, which I'll show you, but I just love this alone. This is incredible. There is time spent in meetings has doubled globally, despite COVID, we've doubled our meetings globally in a year and over 40 billion more emails were delivered in February this year compared to last year. So the state of work and the pace of work is changing really, really fast. Um, and if I just jump into the presentation, uh, I won't um, kind of go into every slide. There's, there's quite a lot of slides in here, guys. Um, I would pick and choose some slides from here that you think are relevant to your customers and maybe share this out to them. Um, but, you know, some of the stuff builds on our story about flexible work and the tooling that Microsoft 365 helps um, companies to, you know, to, to achieve that. Um, but the, 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 the um, evidence is in the numbers, right, when you look at this kind of stuff that, you know, 42% of people saying the lack of essential office supplies at home, you know, one in 10 people don't have an internet connection. So it's kind of super interesting um, stuff that you can help and support customers with. Um, and I think if I just go down here, this is probably the, the most interesting one just for, for, for purposes of us <laughs> today. And this is um, usage of um, our services. 
And so 148% increase in meetings, you saw the 40 billion email, 45% increase in chat, uh, 66 in, increase, 66% increase in, in documents. Uh, of course, we had a uh, holiday season where you see a bit of a decline in that. But you can see what's happening. The trending is that uh, there is more and more data, more meetings, more emails, more calls, more everything. And all customers need the tools to help them to manage that and be productive uh, without getting burnt out, which this um, this guide covers. So that's enough for me, guys. I'll stop talking there and I'll drop these um, links into the chat. And um, yeah, appreciate your time. Feel free to pop questions in if you have any. Awesome. Well, I'll hand it over to Ken. Ken, are you okay with um, sharing partner enablement updates? Yeah, perfect. I uh, hope I, you guys can hear me fine. Yeah. Sweet. So let me just start sharing my screen real quickly before I get started. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen. With my test slide. Uh, can you guys see it? Sorry. I just want to get... Yes, we can. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. Sweet. So, um, you know, once again, it's Ken here. It's giving you guys another an update on some of this stuff that's happening around certification, partner enablement, and some nice events that we have coming up. So uh, just right off the bat, you know, let's talk a little bit about events. There's actually a big BizApps launch event coming up. Um, I say big, but it's only going to be happening in an online format in the 6th of April. So that's the coming Tuesday um, from uh, 9 to 10 uh, a.m. Pacific time. So for us, that should be sometime on Wednesday. And, you know, once again, you know, I think a lot of these events are run in the U.S. time, which makes it a little bit tricky for us to attend but you know if you guys are curious about the biz apps and you guys work heavily in that space i do think that this is a great event um you know it, it, um, i'll be the short one where they'll be talking about the different things they're doing in that space and some couple of cool announcements coming up as well so um definitely tune into that if you guys can make the time for it the other one is, um, so this is something that you guys may have seen on you know some different channels and we're even advertising it on the likes of linkedin as you know, around some courses we are running for free Azure certification for anybody who is currently an AWS certified professional. So these have been selling like hotcakes, um, you know, and this is funded by Patty, which I know a lot of you know as well. So if you guys don't, he's the person who runs the uh, business group uh, for Azure here in New Zealand. And we are really hammering on trying to, you know, like drive certifications. And specifically, we're realizing that, you know, um, there's a lot of technical resource out there today that sits in other clouds, you know, be it GCP or AWS. And, you know, we're happy to, you know, like kind of cross skill all of these other technical professionals in the space of Azure as well. So in that spirit, you know, we have launched a couple of these events. Of these, only these two are upcoming and left available. So the first one is Azure Administrator for AWS System Ops Free Workshop. It's coming up on the 20th of May. This will be in New Zealand times 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And once again, this is a free certification and it's a free, uh, you know, it's a free workshop that kind of goes over the entire material. So, you know, kind of what you need to know to be an Azure expert today, if you are already a, I'm sorry, an AWS expert, um, you know, currently, um, you know, working as one. The other one that we have is the Microsoft Azure Technologies for AWS Architects. So this one covers the architect course and is a little bit longer, running for four days from the 1st to the 4th of June, once again from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And both of these courses, we are working with All House for it. We're actually working with both All House and ACE, I just want to clarify, but um, all the ACE courses and some of the Alt House, Alt House ones um, are fully booked. So once again, these things are selling hotcakes. If you guys are an AWS um, certified professional today, um, please do take up the opportunity here to become an Azure specialist as well. So moving on, I'm talking about our learning partners and you know some of the great stuff that they're doing. You know, I really want to take some time to talk a little bit about you know um, Ace uh, Cloud Academy actually, which is um, run by Ace Training, which some of you may know. Um, one of our two managed learning partners. Uh, for learning in New Zealand and um, honestly our newest one as well making waves among the learning space that I work in quite specifically. So they are launching a brand new website um, here and a new kind of offering around what they call the Cloud Academy where um, essentially you can certify yourself in Microsoft courses but not only with the goal of certification but also with the goal of modular training. So what does that mean? 
that means that um, you know when this does come out, you will pick out the training courses that you would want to specialize in. So let's say if you want to do teams, there is a difference obviously between, for example, teams deployment and developing on teams platform. And you can specialize the kind of tra training you're getting with ACE training with the Cal Academy um, that they have. So this is not available just yet, but it will be available early April is what I'm told. And they are actually having an offer for the first 50 inquiries on their website here for the Cloud Academy. And I believe um, what they're doing is if you have an inquiry around training and you guys want to know more, uh, just obviously put in your details in there and uh, they're giving out a $50 gift voucher um, for anybody who's having any inquiries around this training content here. So honestly, really, really exciting stuff. I can't recommend them enough um, along with, you know, any of our, our other learning partners and in New Zealand that will be Ace and Althouse, um, you know, for all the great stuff that they do within the space that we work in here. Um, yeah, and uh, just kind of talking on this real quickly as well, they've also released another three new offerings. So just um, as a reminder, the classic offering that they would give is, you know, obviously our Microsoft certification, come to a classroom, it's either anywhere from a three or a five day course, and you just kind of go through the material, run through some workshops and some labs. But um, they also do a blended option where you can take, um, you know, just a one or two day course. Um, at a much more minimal cost where they cover the workshops and the labs, but you take a lot of the theoretical learning on your own through online learning content and some videos that you watch online. So, um, you know, that's a kind of classic offering. They've also released new offerings around Microsoft apps. So that's end user training, you know, classic stuff like Word, Excel. And they've also released new things around Adobe training and project management. Honestly, once again, you know, this is just to kind of get a whole complete training kind of experience that you guys have. So I think, yeah, once again, can't recommend them enough. Um, just on the last thing on the day's training, I know that Ray, I think, is in the chat. So if you have any questions on that stuff, feel free to just reach out to him on, um, you know, the chat. But if there's anything else in terms of Microsoft training specifically, feel free to reach out to me um, on email or just on the chat. And I'm happy to answer questions after I'm done with this. So the last thing I want to cover today is we're actually providing a free certification renewal for anybody who has a certification today. So just to be sure, this impacts people who already um, have a exam, um, um, a Microsoft certification, and they, you know, for obvious reasons, they don't want to pay to sit an exam again, and they are allowed currently to take a free certificate, um, a free renewal in order to keep that certification, I believe, for another two years. So how this works is kind of what you see in front of you. It's a free method of learning online uh, to renew their certifications, and you um, do need to take the exam but you will not have to pay the cost for it is the main is the main takeaway here. Um, how this works is that it will be taken either on a live exam, which you can take. And I believe down the line, what we're going to be doing is that you can actually take a certification assessment on Microsoft Learn. And by doing this, you will be able to renew your certification as well. Once, um, and, you know, if you don't if you don't do this and your certification does expire, unfortunately, you will need to re-earn the required exam, which means that you would have to, you know, you will not be able to renew it for free. You would need to sit the exam again as if you were non-certified. So to give a bit more context on, you know, what this looks like, you know, uh, no point in reading the slides in depth here, but just to give you an idea of where this kind of sits in the entire landscape of things. We've already released 19 certifications as of March 2021, um, and these are the renewal assessments that have become available. So once again, these are the assessments you take to renew, um, and the rest of them will be released in 2021 April. So that's uh, coming up, obviously, um, tomorrow, in fact, the next month, right? Um, so yeah, the newly earned certifications will be valid for one year starting on 2021, so not two. So currently any certification you get today is valid for two years. However, we are making a change here in order to make it valid for only one, but obviously we are also making the change here so that you don't need to pay for the certification again. You can take the renewal for free. Um, expiration dates, um, you know, um, some of this stuff, honestly, we haven't really, I think, worked out the kinks, for example, if your certification um, becomes reworked and they get a new, it gets a new number, a good example might be, I believe, uh, the Azure 303, which uh, has recently got a new renewal. Um, how does that impact with the, um, you know, assessment renewals and everything? And I would say right now, it's still early days. So um, I think we're still kind of looking at how that kind of works out, um, you know, just kind of preempting that question a little bit because I can see that coming. <laughs> Um, last thing, if you guys want to know more about this, here are some of the things. Um, apologies, I removed um, this. These some of these links here are obviously for internal. Forgot to remove these, but on the top here, the one I highlighted is a certification renewal on the partner website. So if you can just go on aka.ms 
forward slash cert renewal partner. You can actually land on a page with a lot of these resources that talks more about this in depth. Um, and you can also get some uh, facts here that you can look up. So I'll put these links in the chat window after um, yeah, I'm done with this segment here. And I think that is actually me. Cool. Thanks so much, Ken, for sharing that uh, partner enablement update. Um, All good. I think that is, we will be finishing a little bit earlier today. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to take yourself off mute or open up the chat and drop something in while we're um, here. Otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise we'll, we can wrap up and let everyone go off and do other things today. Hey guys, I know we I say this as well every time, but um, if there is content that you'd um, you'd like, uh, I'll, I'll, sorry, sorry, Josie. No, I'll just real quick. If there is content that you'd like to see on these things, let us know. Um, you can email me direct, uh, Isaac, yeah. uh, or NZ Partner at Microsoft.com. Super easy to remember. NZ Partner at Microsoft.com. If you've got stuff you'd like us to cover, uh, we would be more than willing to. Uh, to listen to that and to, to work out how we can do it. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Josh, you have a question. <laughs> Feel free to pop it in the chat or come off mute. Yeah, g'day, hi. Uh, look, I've had a question around uh, workplace, workplace analytics through CSP. We've got a client who wants that and they're not able to subscribe and it's saying something about them needing an enterprise agreement, even though it's coming through CSP. Yeah, unfortunately, that's correct. Uh, workplace analytics at this point in time is only available through enterprise agreements. Um, there's a minimum seat threshold and a bunch of work that's required um, to activate that service, which means it's only available on enterprise agreements at this point in time. Uh, as you guys know, though, we try and get everything onto CSP, um, and, and we've made good progress over the last few years in some Azure services that weren't there. Um, so I'd expect it to come. I just don't know when. Yeah. Okay. Uh, by the way, Josh, typically you don't get a lot of value from workplace analytics unless you're about 1,000 seats or more. Typically, that used to be the threshold. We will go lower now, but it's a macro view of a business's um, work functions. So if you've got a small business, it doesn't actually help. It doesn't really give you the insights that you get when you're a bigger business. Okay. And a short version of that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Jono just said, any change on EA thresholds likely to impact on increase in CSP? <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks, Jono, for the question. Uh, yeah, so for the people that maybe aren't seeing the chat, yeah, the question is really, is, is there changes to EA thresholds? Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's no change uh, at this point in time. 500 seats of at least uh, Office 305 uh, or a Windows uh, Core Cal or um, Enterprise Cal, all those sort of things, a minimum is the minimum. So five, minimum 500 people licensed for for a set of eligible SKUs um, is the criteria at the moment. Uh, there is potential plans for that to increase, but there's nothing in, in, nothing in the pipeline immediately on that. Yeah. Cool. All right. So if, if that's... Uh... If no one has any questions at the moment, please feel free to follow up later on. Otherwise, um, this recording and all our resources from today will be uploaded onto Yammer. Yeah, I have a question, chaps. Cool. Hi, John. Hey, hey. Hey, hey um, coming back to the uh, referrals and partner centre, and bearing in mind I personally haven't laid eyes on the, on the, uh, the partner centre component for six months or more, so forgive me if I'm out of order with this. But is there any mechanism to provide feedback to the partner on their responsiveness? So is there you know, a, a quarterly or monthly report that comes out and says you responded to this many, you were, you were late on this many, that sort of thing? We do have that data. Um, it's a very good question, John, and a good idea. Um, thank you for raising it. We do have that data, uh, and I do look at it. Um, but I will be honest with you guys. Um, we run pretty lean here, and I just haven't really had the time to kind of do that with the sheer number of partners that we have um, that have had leads sent to them. Um, also, our lead volume is not huge. Uh, let me be open and upfront about that. You know, we're working on that. That's why Darren has introduced the motion uh, with, the, with the, 
telesales folk we have locally, you know, the goal is to increase our lead flow to partners. Uh, but today it's in it's in low, um, well, ten, you know, it's in the 10, 20 odd leads or something a week at the moment. Um, yeah. So Sorry, sorry it's not really answering your question directly, but as a partner, our expectation is that you guys are going in and working on the leads. And if you're not, then we're going to stop sending them to you anyway. Because the algorithm just works that way. It'll stop. It'll stop suggesting you. Actually, the other thing I should point out, actually, John, thank you for raising that. The other thing, guys, just to be aware, in New Zealand, most companies, you guys will know this better than I do, right? Most companies in New Zealand have an incumbent partner. So it's actually not that often. Most of the time we talk to a customer, they've already got a partner. And, you know, we're not really introducing new partners into brand new leads that often. The times where it does happen, though, there's two main reasons. One is the partner hasn't been really helping the customer. They haven't been doing a good job. Uh, or B, um, the, the, part, the, the partner just doesn't know anything about the technology. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so that, I'd like uh, to ask a supplementary question. Sorry, did I talk over someone there? No, that's OK. Go for it. OK. So a supplementary question then, um, is a partner ever going to know that they've been missing out on business from their customers contacted by Microsoft because they don't have that, that technology? So if it's WVD, for example, if there's a whole bunch of customer interest in being generated in WVD, but their partner, the, the partner doesn't have it, are they going to get any feedback to, to demonstrate they're missing out on opportunity? Uh, Our goal is always to try and get the, uh, yeah, let me take a step back, John. We're not that advanced in the process of introducing a new partner. Uh, re the reality is, despite what I've said, uh, when the guys get a lead, they will refer it back to the incumbent partner of record that the customer tells us who it is. We ask the customer, who is your partner? We do have a little bit of challenge, with, by the way, with data sharing because most of the stuff is outsourced and currently our outsourced vendors don't have access to the partner of record data. Um, so they ask the question, is there a partner that you work with? And almost always we refer the customer back to that partner. It's really only when the customer says to us, ah, oh, the partner's useless or whatever, but then we kind of provide other options. Um, I like I like the idea of what you're suggesting as well, John. Both your suggestions are really, really good ones. We haven't got to that point probably where we're that advanced yet in terms of doing that. Um, but I'm happy to take that action actually, and I'm happy to contact partners and give them feedback as we see that. Um, I'm not sure we don't have a way to capture that today directly um, when we Paul, make calls. Yeah, Paul, it's Darren. Can I can I also just jump in? Yeah, please do, Darren. Uh, John, and another, another really um, important point is what we're also starting to see quite a bit of is partner-to-partner -partner, um, stuff. So, for example, you may have a partner that doesn't have, you know, more specialized skills in, say, data and AR, and that seems to be something that's definitely a theme. But I think back to Paul's point, I think what this, the idea of this motion is not to disrupt, right? We, would, we, we want to keep the incumbent partner in play. The challenge comes where, the, as Paul says, the customer's got a requirement that either the partner can't or respectfully won't fulfill. So we see we see partners protecting, for example, an on-premise deployment because they've got services and that wrapped around it, whereas the customer is kind of quite keen to go to cloud. And then we see, it seems to be a bit of sort of tension around that. But our goal is is very clear in terms of our motion. We are driving cloud everywhere, CSP cloud where we can. Um, and if we can work with the incumbent partner to help that motion, that's that's our goal. And if we need to advise partners that they kind of need, maybe need to skill up in in your example, WVD or something, absolutely. That, and that's part of the journey, right? Groovy. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Hey, can I ask another question around the leads? Um, well, I'll take that as a yes. Um, Sure, sure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've had a number of leads come through. Is there, and sometimes they're pretty, pretty, pretty poor quality, and and then they show up as being lost, and you know, we've declined some because we know that they're just. Uh, well, there was one recently that um, we couldn't even get hold of them, so of course we just declined it. 
you know, the contact details weren't even right. So, and I, I guess what I'm getting at is I, I kind of, when you talk about the algorithm, I get a little bit concerned about, you know, how could we get our algorithm reset so that we get a fresh slate? Yeah, I have had that feedback before, actually. Um, I don't have an answer directly for you right now, um, Josh, but what I can tell you is that uh, from July onwards, there'll be a new program that we'll introduce, which will be a, I can't remember, Darren, can you remember the name of it? Um, a preferred referral partner program or something, um, which will give you the opportunity to, or ask the opportunity to kind of provide, to elevate your rankings, basically, um, which we're happy to work on as well. We do have some criteria around it, um, though, and I, I won't, I'm, we're, not, we're not in a position to discuss it really in detail right now. Um, it has only just been launched in pilot markets in Australia and a couple other places, but I can tell you that the criteria right now is to be on that list. You have to be doing a certain volume of business and you have to be doing pretty much all of our core stuff. So we're not going to add a partner on there for Office 305 if you're not doing Azure because of a variety of reasons. So, so there are criteria to that as well, just a heads up. That's not in place yet, but yeah, I'll keep you posted, Josh. And okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's called qualified referral program, and it's not in in play yet. Hey, thanks so much, everyone, for your time today. Have a great Easter weekend. I don't know about you, but I've been working flat out lately, so I'm looking forward to a long weekend. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, thanks for sticking with us on the call. Hopefully, it was of value. See you, team. Thanks, man. Ciao. You're always of value, Mr. Bowkett.